Welcome to the April 29th, 2024 advance report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. This week, Argentina's Javier Malay, the conservative firebrand, announces the first government surplus in Argentina in 16 years. That's a wow. And of course, he said, hey, if you don't print more money, you're not going to have inflation. Wow, so they ran a $309 million surplus for the quarter. Look at this. This is when Javier took office uh, last year and their markets have just exploded. A five-fold gain for the Argentinian index uh, since he took office. So, go Javier. He stuck it to him in Davos, said you guys are crazy, and of course, uh, he's proving that He's actually capable of uh, uh, good leadership and the market really likes it down in Argentina. This is the Dow. We've had the setback, this setback that you see right here, and, and there's a little good news built into this. Uh, this setback right here is related to inflation being sticky and the Federal Reserve delaying the cuts. And at the same time, you've had the Middle East escalation. Uh, the Dow bottomed close to 37,500, finishing the week 38,268. Not a bad week for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, up three quarters of a percent. S&P 500 was up two and two thirds. Microsoft and Google came to the rescue at the end of the week. Google was up nearly 10%. They had a 53% gain in profits. Wow, I guess that AI super cycle is actually working. Microsoft had a 20% gain in profits over last year. And so that, that accounts for what we'll call a happy hippie Friday. Now, who's leading? Well, S&P energy sector so far this year up 14%. The NASDAQ up 5% and uh, S&P finishes the week at about 7%. So energy infrastructure is one of the leading sectors and that could continue for quite some time based upon the profit reports coming out uh, and what we're seeing in their cash flows. Now, this was kind of a shrinking uh, story on profit growth. Last week, when we convened right here, by the way, I'm Spencer McGowan, President, McGowan Group Wealth Management, your financial weatherman, proud to be with you each and every week for your important weekly client update. We designed these updates for our clients. You can also get our Apple podcast if you type in McGowan Group. Earnings growth. Year over year, it was 9% last week. This week coming in at 3.5%. Some of the airlines, Southwest and American Airlines, having Boeing trouble. That was part of this. Uh, the leading sector, communication services, up 42% in profits. IT up 29%. Uh, the energy companies so far are minus 25. We'll see if they can bail that out with next week's uh, primary reports. Consumer staples about a 7% gain in profitability. So if you get steady growth in profits, that is good for the markets. And this is, this is okay. It's not as strong as what we would like to see for those. I had a couple of notable things here. Tesla reported their first year-over-year -year decline in revenue, uh, and that, of course, corresponds to about a 30% loss in those shares so far this year. I wanted to do the 10-year history. Now, there's a lesson built in here. If, if we look at this, this is 2020, the pandemic, they, they turned profitable right in here, 2018, 2019. They moved to profitability. And of course, in hindsight, it's always easier. But if you don't buy money losing companies, you eliminate a huge portion of your mistakes. And if you wait until they become profitable, typically you don't miss very much because they value it differently. And that was true also uh, with Amazon. You could wait until they were profitable and you didn't miss much. And of course, you eliminate a big part of your mistakes when you do that. The, this week, Federal Trade Commission was busy. They sued to protect affluent ladies. They don't want Coach and Michael Kors to merge because they think it would hurt pricing and competition. 
for the high-end handbag industry, then they outlawed non-competes. So the Federal Register this year is likely to reach a record number of regulations and they just keep coming out with new rules. Let's go back to the lesson of the 70s. From 1960 to 1980, the number of federal pages of regulation actually went, they gained five-fold. They added five times as many regulation. Look what happened to inflation. It went from 1% to 13%. So this over-regulation says inflation may be a lot stickier. Uh, what's a good inflation hedge? Well, if you ask Warren Buffett, he says brand names with cash flow and pricing power are the best long-term inflation hedge, and I tend to agree with them. Thank you for tuning in. Go to NetworthRadio.com. You can contact us there. We look forward to serving you and your family in the year ahead. Be sure to set your time for a brainstorming session if you'd like to upgrade your plan today. Thank you for tuning in today to Net Worth Media. We also have Apple Podcast. Simply type in Net Worth Radio and boom, it'll hit your phone right then. If you also go to networthradio.com on a browser, you're going to be able to meet the team. You can see our performance track record, the model portfolios that go with today's broadcast. Also at networthradio.com, the longer play podcast is available there as well. We're grateful that you've tuned in. Remember, when we talk about a security, it doesn't make it a recommendation for your portfolio until we actually complete a written plan for you by Zoom or in office or simply a, a conference call. So you reach us at networthradio.com if you want to get that arranged. Market fluctuations and how to handle them. We build high cash flow portfolios and Past performance doesn't guarantee future results, so you do have to be ready for challenging markets. We can build more cash flow during challenging markets than we can when everybody's happy and everything's up, which is when we tend to raise tactical safety. Those allocation strategies are here at NetWorthRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in.